بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أجمعين اللهم انفعني بما علمتني وعلمني بما ينفعني وزدني علما إنك العليم الحكيم اللهم أخرجنا من ظلمات الوحم وأقربنا بنور الفهم وافتح علينا بمعرفة العلم وسخل أخلاقنا بالحلم آمين وأجمعين اللهم ارزقني نعمة الإخلاص لوجهك الكريم بكل ما أقول وبكل ما أفعل Because uh, of the approaching of the examination of Jordanian board I will submit in Facebook and my YouTube channel spot diagnosis series i will start with the chest imaging diagnostic series spot cases let us start here this is the first case uh, take some seconds and look at the case and they try to answer the the what is the spot diagnosis as we see here triangular shadow and uh, involving the right above upper lobe consistent with collapse this is right upper lobe collapse next case this is child, and as we see here, there is foreign body in the esophagus, but with the foreign body, there is a lucent ring, inner ring, and this is a disc battery. This is a disc battery, and this is need urgent retrieval because it is caused caustic effect on the esophagus and maybe resulting in the perforation and fistula. Here, as we see here, we have the patient has right-sided aortic arch and there is impression on the right-sided of the trachea. And this is a case of right-sided aortic arch. Here, this is a patient with a golden sign and white highlight mass. There is a right upper lobe collapse due to white highlight mass, and this mass it is a bronchogenic carcinoma. So this is a golden sign with white highlight carcinoma or mass and causing right upper lobe collapse. Also, we have nodule here and endotracheal tube in situ, and we have some post operative changes here. Here, take a look at this case, take some seconds and try to answer what is you see here. As we see in this patient, we have pericardial calcification and the calcification mostly due to infection and the cause in this case, it is a viral infection. So this is a pericardial calcification. Here, this patient has lymph angiomyomatosis and we see multiple cysts involving both lungs and involving of the costophrenic angle. Move to the next case. This is patient. Take a look at this case and try to answer. The case it is it is a Monier Cohen syndrome and it is a rare condition characterized by dilatation of the trachea and main bronchi. 
moving to the next case. Take a look of this case and try to answer. In this case, this is a case of Pictus excavator and we see the right-sided heart is not well seen in this chest X-ray and we don't have any consolidation in this patient. And here we, we have another sign. This is the medial, in the medial part of the breast. It is sign, it is seen well, and this is the medial border sign. And we have also transverse uh, orientation of the posterior rib and vertical orientation of the anterior ribs. So this is a classic case of pictus excavatum in this female patient. Take a look of this patient and with, with respiratory distress syndrome. And uh, this patient As we see here, this patient, we have multiple cysts involving both the right lung and pushing the rest, pushing of the rest of the lung to the left side and the cysts are large. And this, it is consistent with congenital pulmonary airway malformation. The previous name, it is congenital cystic adenomatoid malformation. And it is a rare multi-cystic interval over mass. And uh, as we see here in the cyst, the cyst of uh, more than two centimeter. And this is the type one of the congenital pulmonary airway malformation. We move to the next case, uh, take a look at the next case. And this patient, we have chest X-ray and CT scan on this patient. Take a look of this patient. We have on the chest X-ray, power vertebral masses on the on the both side of the spine, dorsal spine, as we see here, it is lobulated mass lesion. These are not lymph nodes. And this patient has, uh, this is uh, the B1 giving the bing bong balls, looks like bing bong bones. And the uh, skeleton, it is, uh, in, it is increased in, density of sclerosis with cardiac enlargement. And this is a patient with thalassemia. And this is a patient with thalassemia. And this is an extra medullary hematopoiesis. Extra medullary hematopoiesis. We move to the next case. This patient with respiratory distress. What do you think about this case? So the patient here, we have two findings here. We have left-sided pneumothorax, as we see here on the left side. And this is the sign, this is deep sulcus sign. And also we have a pneumomediastinum causing lifting of the thymus upward. And this is called a spinnaker sign or also called angel wing sign. And also we have this sign. This is continuous diaphragm sign of this patient due to pneumomediastinum. So this is pneumothorax and pneumomediastinum in this patient. And uh, this patient, take a look at this patient try to answer what is the abnormality in this patient. And this is two cuts CT scan. 
soft tissue window and lung window. And as we see here with this patient, there is an interposition of the colon between the diaphragm and the liver. And this is a Chiria TD syndrome. If the patient has symptoms, it is a syndrome. If the patient has no symptoms, it is a Chiria TD sign. This is, there is difference between the presentation. If the patient is symptomatic, it is a Chiria TD syndrome. If the patient is asymptomatic, it is a Chiria TD sign. We move to the next case. Let's take a look at this case and try to answer the case. And this is this is a left lower lobe collapse, and this is a sale sign, and this is a sale sign. Also, we have left hilar mass causing this lower lobe collapse. The, we have in the left lower lobe collapse in this patient, we have two signs. We have the cell sign and the flat waist sign, the flat waist half sign, the flat waist half sign. So the, we have two signs in this patient. Lower lobe collapse due to most probably carcinoma in the left hilum. Take a look at this case. This is cardiac CT, CT coronary, uh, coronary, and you try to answer what is the uh, abnormality in this case. This is a normalus origin of the left coronary artery from non-coronary sinus. This is the non-coronary sinus, this is the left coronary sinus, and this is the right coronary sinus for the right coronary artery, and the left coronary sinus should be for the left coronary artery, but the left coronary artery here, it is arising from non-coronary sinus, and it is aortic in uh, course. So this is another cardiac case of what do you think of this case? And this patient presented with recurrent chest pain. As we see here, this is anomalous origin of the right coronary artery from the left coronary sinus and with short interarterial course, malignant course. This is the aorta, and this is the pulmonary trunk, and this is a malignant course. So this is a anomalous origin of the right coronary artery from the left coronary artery with a short interarterial malignant course, as we see here. We move to the next case. This is another case of cardiac CT, what do you think of this patient has? Patient has anomalous of the right circumflex artery arising from the right coronary sinus and it is retroaortic in course and this is an example of this anomaly and this is uh, as i said this is anomalous of circumflex artery arising from the right coronary sinus and it is retroaortic in course we move to the next case it is simple case try to look at this case and try to answer what is the abnormality as we see here, this is a symbol AVM involving in the right lung in the subblower region with a feeding vessel. 
So this is an AVM of the subblower white lung with a feeding visit. We move to the next case. Patient here, look at this case and the try to answer what is the what is the case? This patient has uh, liver cirrhosis and ascites, and we have also esophageal varices. This patient has esophageal varices with liver cirrhosis and ascites. We move to the next case. This is very simple case and we have this patient ha has patient with uh, This case, we move to the, this case, this case is a very simple case, as I said, and this is aberrant left subcutaneous artery, and you see the subcutaneous artery below the esophagus, and this sometimes causes dysphagia, and uh, dysphagia in this, in this situation, it is called dysphagia dysphagia. We move to the next case. Try to look at the next case, and it is uh, hoping it is simple. What do you think of this case? This case, as we see here, it is uh, surgical emphysema involving the left side of chest wall and is extended to the neck and giving the appearance of gingo leaf sign. It, so this is a surgical emphysema giving the appearance of gingo leaf sign. And this surgical emphysema in the, in the left side of the chest wall in the pectoralis muscle. And here, this is another case and this patient, try to look at this patient. What do you think of this patient has? As you see here, this patient, we see multiple pleural calcification involving the both pleural, both lung, both pleural on both sides, and also involve the diaphragm here and the left diaphragm here. And this gives the appearance of holy leaf sign and this gives the holy leaf sign and this is calcification a blue black calcification related to asbestos uh, we move to the next case and this is uh, a simple case as we see here this is a trachea a tracheal bronchus. This is a tracheal bronchus, our big bronchus. We move to the next case. As we see here, we have this coronal reformatted image with this patient. And uh, this patient has uh, multiple cysts involving the about mid zones and really involve the costophrenic angles. And this is a case of the lung of Hans histocytosis. This patient has bronchial atresia, as we see here in coronal CT view format. We have lucent area involving the uh, lo left lower lobe, as we see here, associated with well-defined obesity.
and this will define obesity representing a um, mucosal. This is representing a um, mucosal of atomic left lower lobe of bronchus. So this is a bronchial atresia, lucent area with bronchoseal, uh, with the bronchoseal, bronchial atresia. Uh, we move to the next case. As we see here, we have patient with pericardial cyst on the right cardiophonic angle. And other differential diagnosis, we should exclude the Morgagni hernia, but it is not Morgagni hernia. And lipoma, it is not the density of the lipoma. And lymph node, it is not density of lymph node. So this is a cyst in the right pericardic, right cardiophonic angle, and this is a pericardial cyst. Uh, we move to the next case. This is uh, the patient with tetralogy of fallow. We have the boot shaped heart and right sided aortic arch and pulmonary atresia here, uh, pulmonary, uh, pulmonary atresia, and we have concavity uh, here, and also we have hypertrophy of the right ventricle with elevated apex. So this is a tetralogy of fellows. Here we have patient with bilateral pulmonary embolism involving the anterior segment of the both upper lobes. Here, patient with uh, hernia with colon and mesentery and fat in the anterior mediastinum. It is consistent with uh, Morgagni diaphragmatic hernia. Uh, we have uh, moved to next case. This is this patient with uh, have scimitar shadow and the finding of the this patient has scimitar shadow and in the background of partial anomalous pulmonary venous return. This is the scimitar syndrome in background of partial anomaly pulmonary venous return. And this patient has uh, embryema, as we see here on the left side, and extended to the chest wall with enhancing. And this is embryema nisi, nisi tense. And this CT angiogram of this patient and extended to the left chest wall and to the upper abdominal wall and the left side with some gas bubble here. Uh, we move to the next case. Uh, this is the next case. This is symbol. This is a right-sided tension in your motor works with some compression of the right lung and minimal crossing to the midline to the left side. Uh, this is a tension right-sided in your motor works. We move to the next case. This is a patient with uh, miliary shadow in our country. Uh, this is a uh, miliary tuberculosis until above otherwise, but keep in mind other differential diagnosis like metastasis, other infection, or other neurogranulomatous disease. Okay. And this is a case of miliary TB. And this is another patient, uh, another case. This is, oh, look at this case and what do you think of this case? This patient has multiple 
lymph nodes in the axillary region. And this is uh, a patient with a lymphoma in the systemic lymphoma, most likely with multiple bilateral lymphadenopathy in the axillary region. This is another patient. Here, patient with uh, box shaped heart. And this is a narrow waist. And this is big heart from chest to chest wall, chest wall to chest wall. And this is an Ebstein anomaly. And this is a classic case of Ebstein anomaly. And we move to the next case. This case, this is a filling defect in the left atrium, and it is it is a smooth filling defect, and it is the the mass here. It is attached to the interarterial septum, and this is characteristic of arterial myxoma involving the left atrium. Differential diagnosis, arterial thrombus. Yeah. Here we have patient with bilateral elastofibroma dorsi involving the both serratus anterior muscle here and there bilaterally. So this is elastofibroma dorsi bilaterally. Here, this is another case. Look for the case and they try to answer what is the diagnosis in this patient. We have we have this patient has classic case of uh, sarcoidosis. We see lymph node here in the right barotracheal region and bilateral hilar region. This is what we call it. A one, two, three sign, and this is one, two, three sign, and uh, also it is called Garland triad sign or bone broker sign. So this is a classic case of sarcoidosis. We move to the next case. As we see here, this patient has anterior mediastinal mass and the mass, we have cystic component, we have calcification here, and we have also some fat here. And this is a classic case of teratoma, and also the histopathology, it is above that mature teratoma. This patient has mass in the posterior mediastinum, and uh, mass indenting the ossifugus cause narrowing, cystic in nature, and this is the duplication cyst of the foregut, and this is a duplication cyst of the foregut or ossifugus. Okay. We move to the next case. The patient has, uh, this patient has seven years old girl patient. What do you think of this patient? The patient has, um, As we see here, the, we have a prominent main pulmonary artery, and this is a classic case of the uh, pulmonary stenosis. We move to the next case. This is patient with dextrocardia with bilateral cystic changes involving the uh, both lower lobes, more to the left side. This is a Cartaginal syndrome. This is a cartaginal syndrome. This is a cartaginal syndrome. We move to the next case.
this is very simple. Next case, try to answer what is the spot diagnosis. This is a case of left cervical rib, as we see here in the left side. It is a classic and simple. We move to the next case. This patient has what the, the patient has dyspnea, and what is the clinical what is the diagnosis? And this patient has pulmonary embolism, bilateral pulmonary embolism with saddle shape pulmonary embolism with saddle shape pulmonary embolism. This patient, what you think this patient has, uh, this is as we see here in this patient, we see coarctation of the aorta and what we see, we see the patient has a rib notching and a rib notching involving the inferior aspect of the ribs and it is symmetrical. This is a classic case of the coarctation of the aorta. <coughs> We move to the next case. What do you think of the patient has in the next case? As we see here, this is a pneumomedistinum and the pneumomedistinum extended above the aortic arch to the neck, both bilaterally, both bilaterally here and there. And this is a case of a pneumo Metastinum. This is a case of pneumomedistinum. And this is the another case. What do you think of this case? And we see here we have the aphromatic hump or the aphromatic eventuation, and it is anterior in location. And this is a classic the aphromatic hump or eventuation, it is anterior delocated. And don't mistake it with other pathology. And this is a diaphragmatic ventilation. Here, this is a case. What do you think of this case? And um, this is the... <coughs> Sorry. What do you think of this case? There is a mass lesion involving the mediastinum from the neck to the to the upper abdomen and this is so it is located in the posterior mediastinum and it is filled of uh, fluid uh, and food and this is a classic case of echelasia and this is a classic case of echelasia What do you think of this case? This is another case. Patient has, what do you think of patient has? Here, as we see here, the patient has no clavicle on the left side, on the right side, and has clavicle on the left side, but it is hypoplastic with some fracture. And uh, what do you think? This is a case of uh, and deformity of the spine with possible which vertebra here, with possible butterfly appearance or hemivertebra. And this is a case of epilido cranial dysplasia. Cranial dysplasia. We move to the next case, and this patient with 
both manually fibrosis involving lung basis, as we see here, but classically here we see the sufficus is dilated, and this is a case of scleroderma, and this is a case of scleroderma. And we move to the next case. And this patient, what do you think of this patient has? As we see here, the clavicle is fractured with some alignment and with some pseudoarthrosis. This is a fracture of the left clavicle. And this is a discussion of 50 cases of chest imaging spot diagnosis. Hoping you like it. And we, inshallah, we also try to present body imaging cases, neuroradiology cases, musculoskeletal cases, and pediatric sport cases. And hoping to see you soon. Inshallah, subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika, shadu la ilaha illallah, and Thank you very much for listening and hoping to see you soon, inshallah.